Hey, this is Mo. I'm an ophthalmology resident at Baylor College of Medicine, and today I'll be sharing with you my mnemonics for phacomatoses for OCAPs. Standardized tests love to test the phacomatoses, so I hope this helps when studying for the OCAPs. Just as a background, I'll go over some symbols that may pop up a lot in the phacomatoses video. So for example, if you see a picture of the galaxy, it basically represents glaucoma. If you see Dom, an act uh, character in the movie Fast and Furious played by Vin Diesel, that can help you remember autosomal dominant. And if you see a rhesus pieces, this can help you remind you of autosomal recessive. I have no financial disclosures from Vin Diesel or rhesus pieces. <laughs> so the first fake mitosis that I will be reviewing is Sturgey Weber, also known as encephalotrigeminal angiomatosis. For a Sturgey Weber, I like to think of Spider-Man. The web in Sturgey Weber helps. It's important to know that Spider-Man was not born Spider-Man. He was bit by a spider. Similar, similarly, Sturgey Weber is not inherited. It is sporadic, and as a heads up, so is Wyburn Mason, which we will be talking about later. Here, Spider-Man is seen staring up at the galaxy, as Sturgey Weber is associated with glaucoma. It's important to know that if the child is less than 10 years old, then most likely the cause of the glaucoma is primary angle abnormality on the side of the port wine stain. And if it is after 10 years old, then the glaucoma is likely due to increased episcleral venous pressure. Sturgey Weber is also associated with leptomeningeal vascular malformations, later causing cortical and subcortical calcification. So get an MRI and avoid contact sports. As we mentioned, Sturgey Weber has the finding of port wine stains. Just imagine Spider-Man drinking a glass of wine. Also, it's associated with diffuse choroidal hemangioma, not isolated. This is also known as a tomato ketchup or a ketchup red fundus. So just imagine him also eating fries with some ketchup. The fundus photo shows a left eye fundus that appears redder or pinker. I'm sorry. The fundus photo shows a right eye fundus that appears redder or pinker compared to the normal left eye. Typical of a diffuse choroidal hemangioma. And that's pretty much it for Sturgey Weber. Next, we will be talking about NF1, Neurofibromatosis 1, which can be remembered by thinking of the show Glee, where the main character is singing Wrecking Ball, because it is also known as von Recklinghausen. This picture is what a skin neurofibroma looks like, and the reason why she is swinging in the galaxy is because there's an increased risk of glaucoma if there is a palpebral plexiform neurofibroma seen here. The show Glee can help remind you of optic nerve glioma, which is described as a fusiform or enlarged optic nerve with a kinking of the course seen here on the MRI. The degenerative cell processes found in the optic nerve gliomas are also known as Rosenthal fibers, thus the roses scattered across. Furthermore, optic nerve gliomas are a low-grade pilocytic astrocytoma, thus the astronaut resting on a pillow. NF1 is autosomal dominant, just think of Dom singing along. And finally, NF1 is also associated with sphenoid wing dysplasia and cafe au lait spots with these characters displaying wings and drinking coffee. Since these optic nerve gliomas are slow growing and compatible with long-term survival, we usually watch them unless there is progressive visual loss or if there's growth more posteriorly in the brain. Uh, it, just know that if you treat it, it can result in vision loss. Next, there's neurofibromatosis 2, also known as multiple inherited schwannomas, meningiomas, and ependymomas, M-I-S-M-E. This can help be remembered with the black swan because it is associated with bilateral vestibular schwannoma. There's an eerie scene in the movie where the main character, played by Natalie Portman, sits in a train. This can help you remember the tram track sign in MRI for optic nerve sheath meningioma. With NF2, you can see all types of meningiomas, including optic nerve sheath, intracranial, and, sp and spinal meningiomas. This is represented by the train poster Spider-Man for meningiomas. This is different than Sergi Weber, which has leptomeningeal vascular malformations. Back to NF2. On biopsy, you may have Antony A and Antony B cells, which is represented by Antonio Banderas' poster. In addition, NF2 is associated with posterior subcapsular cataract and or cortical wedge cataract. This is represented by the CATS poster. NF2 is autosomal dominant, again DOM from Vin Diesel, and chromosome 22 on NF2 gene. 
lower yield, it is associated with morning glory disc anomaly as well as fibrous dysplasia. So this is Natalie Portman on Good Morning America to remember the morning glory. And this is her in the Natalie Portman rap video on SNL where she's just dissing a bunch of people, so fibrous dysplasia. The treatment for optic nerve sheath meningioma is different from optic nerve glioma. Patients here should be offered radiation therapy. The fourth phacomatosis, notice I didn't put the animation for Vin Diesel, but that's okay. I guess you know what type of autosomal inheritance it is. The fourth phacomatosis is tuberous sclerosis. You can think of watching the tube, and here is DJ T. Esto for tuberous sclerosis. And he's having a concert outdoors with trees in the background, which we will get to. Of note, tuberous sclerosis is also known as Bernieville Pringle disease. So it's present next to the Pringles, next to a video of Weekend and the Bernies. The tree background helps to remind you of the pathognomonic ash leaf spot, as well as the chagrin patches. There is also the astronaut symbol to remind you, this time, of retinal astrocytic hematoma, which is present in 50% of patients with tuberous sclerosis and is actually bilateral in about a quarter of patients. These are superficial nerve masses that arise from glial astrocytomas in the nerve fiber layer. TS can also have periungual fibromas as you're flipping through the channel and is associated with facial angiofibromas, chagrin patches, which you already mentioned, and cafe au lait spots, also seen in NF1 and NF2. And 90% of patients have brain cortical tubers, which can calcify. These cortical tubers can lead to seizures and have been linked with mental retardation, thus classifying Vogue's triad of seizures, MR, and skin findings. Lower yield, uh, lower yield um, TS can also have heart rhabdomyomas and kidney angiomyolipomas. TS is autosomal dominant with a mutation of tumor suppressor genes TS1 hemartin on chromosome 9 and TS2 tuberin on chromosome 16. Ataxia telangiectasia is next. It's also known as Lewis Barr syndrome. So just think of Lewis CK and Roseanne Barr in a bar. They're also an ATM representing the ATM uh, uh, gene, ataxia telangiectasia mutated gene, which is involved in tumor suppression and DNA repair and can have drastic effects, including increased risk of T cell leukemias, represented by Mr. T, thymus hypoplasia, and decreased IgG, making these patients very prone to fatal respiratory bacterial infections and neoplasms like leukemia and lymphoma. These patients are very sensitive to light due to UV damage, and the BRCA1 gene uh, is also influenced by the ATM gene. So even female heterozygous uh, carriers can have an increased risk of breast cancer. As the name ataxia telangiectasia implies, by age two, these patients develop ataxia, uh, followed by dysarthria, dystonia. They are severely physically disabled. And one of the earliest signs that can be uh, presented to your clinic is an impaired ability to initiate saccades, which is an ataxic movement specifically of the eye. This can be remembered by a sack of money under the ATM. Lastly, Lewis CK dancing can help you think of ataxic movements, and these are clinical pictures of telangiectatic vessels that are seen in the eyes, the mouth, the ears, um, with Lewis Barr syndrome. The last three phagomatoses don't have as many things to remember. The first is Wyburn Mason, also known as Racimos hemangioma, or Bonnet Duchamp Blanc. I'm probably butchering that. It is sporadic, like Sturgey Weber. With Wyburn Mason, just think of Medusa's hair. Nothing else looks like it. There's also Von Hippel Landau disease, which is autosomal dominant on chromosome 3, like three words in Von Hippel Landau, and is associated with renal cell carcinoma, RCC, three letters, and pheochromocytoma, and even cerebellar hemangioblastomas. Thus, it's important to get an MRI on these patients as well. Also, get an MRI for Wyburn Mason because they may have vascular malformations. With Von Hippel Landau, you'll see retinal capillary hemangiomas, aka hemangioblastomas. They all look like they're going to blast. Last is retinal cavernous hemangioma. This is autosomal dominant, and just think grape like cluster. This wraps up all the high yield information on phacomatoses. I hope you enjoyed it. Best of luck.